Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you this morning, Lord God, that it be none of Tanya but all of you, Lord God. Pierce through my mind, my heart, and my spirit, Lord God, to deliver the word to the women that you gave unto me, Father God. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, for choosing me for this women's conference, Lord God, to be a staple point in the house of God for the women, Lord God. I thank you that on that day of April the 30th, 2018, when you gave me the opportunity to be in this position over the women, Lord God. I want to say thank you this morning. I pray, Lord God, that you will touch the hearts and the minds and the soul of every woman in the house this morning. Father God, meet every need, God. Whatever it is, God, that's troubling their minds. Whatever it is, God, that's troubling their heart. God, we come this morning seeking you, Lord Jesus. We come this morning, Lord God, knowing that you're faithful and you are able, God. Father, I say thank you. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your might. Thank you for your power. Thank you for keeping us, Lord God, in our right minds, Lord God. Thank you for watching over our children, Lord God, our household, our husbands, our, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, Lord God. We give you all the honor and the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for those of y'all that know me, know that I sweat on my nose. And now, up in age, I have my own Daytona Beach moment called Hot Flash. Every now and then I have those summer moments when I just start breaking out with a sweat. So if you see me up here continually to wipe my face, just know I'm having a moment. The word of the title this morning is The Kept Fire. K E P T. That's what makes you unbreakable. When you're able to maintain in all situations, in all circumstances, a kept fire. Pastor uh, Brown gave this scripture, and when he gave this scripture for the women's conference, it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 9. It talks about in verse 9 and verse 8, but verse 9 states, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not in distress, destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart. How many of you have been persecuted? How many of you have been lied on? You know, back in the day, uh, before I got real saved, I had a zero tolerance for the way I was raised and in the street about being lied on. People didn't got so Grafted now, they record conversations, but they only want to play what you say and don't want to play what they actually and what they say. And leading up to this conference in the last uh, 60 days, I've been through some stuff. I've been tried on every side, but it's what God put in me that don't allow me to approach everything that he show you that's being said or show you what is being done. Because when God calls you, it ain't going to be easy. It ain't never easy. It's never a good fight. It's never, God, why me? Why not you? But one thing I don't like about a liar if you're going to tell it, tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because I looked it up and I learned that here in the state of Florida, 
when you are being recorded without your consent, it's a felony. And the enemy is so crafty. He will have them to come and say, hey, what about this? And what about this? And what about that? And will take your words and put them on cycle as if they was in a washing machine and just spin them all around. But I come this morning to tell you, there is something greater in the inside of you. And it's the fire of the Holy Ghost that will keep you. Even when you've been perplexed, even when you're being persecuted and lied on and talked about, that's what keeps you. That's what adds the flame to the fire of promotion. You don't always have to open your mouth to speak. You don't all get down on your knees. And say, God, why? Why is this happening to me? It's because of the fire that's inside of you. For those that know that we have a barbecue business and my husband would uh, let the grill burn two hours before he put the meat on it. And as he began to say, oh, I'm going to go out here and check the grill again. I got to go out here and check the fire because if the fire is not right and the temperature ain't right, the meat ain't going to come out right. And I know sometimes we go through things in life and we keep saying, God, why I'm going through this? Why is it seeming like everything is going wrong and this and that? Because God is keeping the fire inside of you lit. The fire that will make you an intercessor when your children are acting up. The fire that will make you an intercessor to cry out and pray for those on your job. You on your job, doing what God has told you to do. You say hi, you say good morning. I can't wait to get paid, God. I got to pay my tithes and I got to pay my cell phone. You, that's your mindset. But there is always going to be a fire marshal bill that will come and try to put your fire out. Tell a scheme and allow you in a heartbeat, even at work. You'll find yourself in the office saying, Lord, I've been on this job nine years. I ain't never got called in until fire boss your bill showed up. And it's nothing that you have done. They don't understand the fire that you carry. See, this fire here, you can't go and get a fire extinguisher and put it out. You can't go and take this here water and keep drinking and the fire goes out. Then down here, I want you all to look up in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12 through 13. And in reason, it says, the fire on the altar, say the fire on the altar, shall be kept burning. It shall not go out. The priest shall burn wood on the fire every morning, and he shall arrange the burnt offering on it, and he shall burn it as fat for a peace offering. The fire shall be kept burning on the altar. Your fire should never go out. I'll be honest and I'll be the first to say I don't mind being transparent. You will know when your fire is out. When you find yourself in conversations you shouldn't be in. You will know your fire is out when your household go to getting flipped upside down and you want to blame the devil. No, that's you. Because the more time you spend in the word of God, the more time you spend on your face with God, the more your fire in the inside will burn. You won't have time. To be caught up in the wrong conversation. You won't have time to allow the devil to come in your house and wreck habit. You won't have time. But I see here lately in this new century church, people are dying and going slap to hell. And we trying to run in here. We got a whole city in the city of Tampa that is not on the news. It ain't nobody saying nothing. Snatching and taking these children every single day. 
And ain't nobody saying that. You know why? Because everybody trying to run in here. Ain't nobody going downtown making no noise. If you're going to be a fire starter, start the fire with these kids. Let's rally up together and go downtown. Let's go down here and talk to the mayor and see what the police is doing. Oh, never mind, because one of them just got arrested yesterday for trying to lure and take a child. When you're supposed to be out here protecting us and protecting our children. If you're going to be a fire starter, don't be a gossiper one. Don't be the one that go and take the same knife you set at the table with somebody and ate with and stab them in the back. Don't be her. Don't be Messy Martha. If you're going to be a fire starter, let's go downtown. When the last time you went and fed somebody? When the last time you asked and said, God, what can I do to make a difference? What can I do? to help out around the church instead of trying to see who's in position and who's on the front row. And I can't sit by J.D. this week because, and I can't sit by him because such and such in town. And, oh, I can't do this. And, and oh, Brown ain't here. So what we going to do? We going to church for the clothes because Brown, this ain't Brown church. It's God's church. And I'm still in agreement with what God said 30 years ago about this house. We got to stop trying to figure out why she sit over here because of her mom and dad. Why, why she get to sit over here? Then what they'll do, they'll come over and want to talk to you. See what you're going to tell them. See what, what kind of information they can get. There's a paper here in town. It's called the Florida Sense. And everybody, anybody read that besides me? It's a lot of information in there to let you know what's going on. But how many of y'all get that urge to wake up four day in the morning, that two or three o'clock, and you say, Lord, I, I got to go get back in the bed. I can't do it right now. That's the fire of God trying to kindle inside of you to get on your knees and pray. Intercede for somebody that's going through. Intercede for your neighbor. Intercede for your church. Intercede for your children. When the last time you said, God, I, I, I don't know what this is inside of me, but I, I want to go over here and say, this is what I can do. And I want to go over here and say, Lord, I can help over here. But you don't move because you're worried about what somebody going to say. I have come to my own self. I'd rather do what he say to do and deal with his judgment and do what man would not allow me to do or say not to do to have to stand in front of him and say, you did nothing I asked. You was too busy trying to dress up and please everybody else. When I told you to pray for that person, you didn't do it because they said something about you. It's not about you. I have walked this walk and lived this life long enough to know it's not about me. And those that know from the past when we have women's ministry, you know my favorite word. I don't give a flip-flop and a high heel how nobody feel about me. You got to get to a place where you got to die to yourself. Because if you don't, guess what's going to happen? The minute somebody rub you wrong, you gone. You know how much I've been rubbed wrong? How much I've been lied on? Back in the days, I used to just want to tell people, just stand here and tell the pastors in the past everything you think you know. But what I loved about them was they didn't judge you based on what nobody came and told them you said. They based judgment on your character and your integrity because they see something in you. When they're your leaders, they should be able to see something in you more greater than what they hear. More greater than what they heard. They should be able to see the fire of God in you. I'm going to give you one more scripture. And we're going to pray. And it's Romans chapter 12, verse 11 and 13. How do you keep the fire burning? How do you keep the fire burning? 
You keep the fire burning by pushing away the plate. You keep the fire burning by, by, by saying, God, use me. But use me in your way, God. You keep your fire burning by, by interceding for others. You keep your fire burning by turning off the TV. You keep your fire burning by, don't answer that phone call. I got a person that I grew up with, and every time they call my phone, you know what it say? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know why I named it uh-uh? Because she's a monitoring spirit. She want to watch everything somebody posts and do on Facebook. And then she want to call you and say, oh, girl, did you know about this? Did you? Uh-uh. That's my new word for the season. Uh-uh. Tanya, you heard uh-uh. And the reason why is because I said it earlier, people. We in the last days, y'all. People are going to do things that we didn't think they're going to do. People are going to say things we didn't think they're going to say. We need to prepare ourselves for what's coming, what's happening, by keeping our fire burning from the inside. Now that you've been persecuted, now that you've been lied on, now that you've been talked about, now that you've been stabbed in the back, my next question, what are you going to do now? You seek God. You don't seek man. You seek God. God is the one. Didn't he say he's a consuming fire? He's the God who answers by fire? That's what makes you unbreakable. That divorce didn't kill you. Them find you off that job, that didn't kill you. Him not wanting to marry you, that didn't kill you. Why? Because something greater is on the inside of you. Something so much tangible is on the inside of you that caused you to say, okay, I'll take a licking and keep on ticking. And that's what you have to do. Uh, I know this one's going to be a little... You can't be shacking up. And don't think you ain't going to get burned playing with fire. You can't be doing that. Oh, I like your ring and I, I, I want me a husband. Honey, <laughs> he back there. But let me tell you something. It ain't easy being married these days. It's okay to have some biceps, some triceps, some muscles, and all. It's okay that sometimes you walk in your bedroom and it smell like a gym. It's okay. But what ain't okay when he wants you and you say, I'm tired. Oh, I'm so tired. I, I dealt them kids today and I went to work and oh, and all of that. No, 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 no. It's okay being a wife. But are you going to play your part? You got to have enough discernment of fire in you. You got to have enough discernment fire in you on how to be a wife. The wedding dress, yes, it look good. The ring look good, but it costs you something. It may cost you some sleepless nights. It may cost you a headache. I know that when uh, Pastor Brown and J.D. first came to the church, it was a, like a, and I wish all those women was here when they first came. But they was here for the wrong reason. They was here to monitor. If I wear my dress, and I get it from Gap, where it's going to be extra tight, is he going to look at me when I take my offering up there? Nope. If I wear my jeans so tight that they look like somebody painted them on me, is he going to look at me when I go up there 
Nope. You know why? Because women, we spend too much time looking for validation from man when God has already told you that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender, not the borrower. I am beautiful. I am the craftsmanship of God. I am handmade. I am fearfully, wonderfully made in God. But you're still looking for man to validate you. Do you know women, as Pastor Seely said last night, we are able to carry a whole nother human being. I had five sons, five, and the biggest one was the third one. Ten pounds, ten ounces, 19 and a half inches long. When he came out, I just wanted to just take him straight to school because <laughs> he was big enough. I wanted to just take him on to school and register him. Because he was big enough. When he came out, ain't nothing we bought fit. I had a little old me. And I was thinner then. They used to call me thin then. But now I ain't going to tell you what they call me. <laughs> yep, because I love my collard greens and macaroni and cheese and barbecue chicken and chicken wings. Yes, ma'am. And when I had my first son, they say, oh, ma'am, you got to do emergency C-section because uh, something's wrong with his breathing. I said, okay. But then they lied to me. They say, every baby or child you have after this, it's got to come through cesarean. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That second one? No. Nope. He different. So you got to know your children. If you got more than two, you got to know them. They different. That second one? Oh, he surprised me. He want to come while I'm sitting on the porch eating crabs and collard greens. Now, you know that don't go, that ain't even a dish. So when he come, I stand up. He in my shorts. And I'm by myself. I delivered three times by myself. But I couldn't understand then about God's fire. See, God don't have to allow man to tell you how to be a woman. He give us the instincts of being a woman. You can give a little mother Kylie or the other baby a baby at all, they're going to, why? Because that's what's in them. And when I had the third one, the giant one, him, that boy, I had him at home, and when he came out, I had him in three minutes. They didn't even take me to the hospital. They said, we're going to take him, check him, and we'll get back with you. Same thing with the fourth one. But it was something about the one that I gave birth to, and he died in my arms. I didn't question God why he died. I asked God, how do I deal with this? He said, I put what you need on the inside to intercede for other mothers that's barren. Other mothers have lost their children. See, we think when we are going through something, it's about us. It's not even about us. It's about what we're carrying. It's about what's in us. And I say that to morning, you get ladies. Also, going back to Romans chapter 12, keeping the fire burning. Keeping the fire burning. Keeping the fire burning. When you're cooking at home, you know when to turn the fire up and when to turn the fire down. You know exactly how much fire and the, and the temperature of fire it takes to cook rice. You know. But what fire are you using to keep that what God has put in you? What fire are you using to stay burning for God? 
You know, like when you want a man, you, you do all this extra stuff. You, you'll get your hair done and, you know, have this hanging lash and you go do all this stuff because you're trying to impress him. But what are you doing and what have you done lately to impress God? Without nobody looking, without not wanting no one to come and pat you on the back and say, oh, girl, you did good. Uh-uh. What have you done to impress God? My husband had to get used to me, getting up every morning at a certain time, leaving him in the bed to go spend time with God. He had to get used to that. And the reason why is because when you're not in a relationship, it's all about God. But when you get that man or you get that woman, you start slacking back. God, I read tomorrow. God, I pray tomorrow. God, he, he texted me this morning, or she texted me this morning. That's what you start doing. But you got to keep that fire burning. Because the minute you don't get that text, or the minute you don't get that call, he must be this, and she must be this, or he ain't got time. But when you got fire inside of you, oh, baby, he busy. Let me go on over here and finish doing what I'm doing. Let me go feed the homeless. Let me go up here to the staff meet. Let me go on the church. He busy. Because see right here, this battlefield and this fire starter that's in here, you cannot allow this here to take over this. Let God control this and this, the way we think, by renewing our mind daily. Don't get so caught up and come into church just to come to church. We've been doing this for years. I want to see, really, really, really want to see the dead raised. Our pastor shouldn't be that sick. He shouldn't be going through when it's all of us women here. We should be wrapped around this altar praying. You know what happens when we get together and we go to praying? Things change. You know what happens when we get together and go to gossiping? It spreads. It's the same thing when we pray. But the only thing different is God is in it. When the last time have you really, really asked God, what you have for me to do in this season? What I can do in this house to make it better? When the last time you asked him? Because there is something greater in the inside of you. You carrying it. You carry it in your womb. You cannot consider yourself to say, hey, uh, Candace, what you think that I should do for the next women's meeting? Why I'm asking Candace? Her opinion would really matter. But when you gonna ask God? When is things going to go back being about God? See, when we take him out of it, when we take Jesus out of it, you see stuff try to go to trickling, down, not upward. We vertical. We going up. Sin, whether it's this small, that big, or that tall, it's sin in God's eyes. I just read you the scripture about the altar on the fire. The fire on the altar, I'm sorry. When are we going to go back to praying, ladies, like we used to? Coming up in this church, there used to be some mothers in this church. And, 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 and see, now we get so offended if somebody come and say, baby, um, 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 your pants is down. Oh, there she go talking about my pants. And oh, I don't want to stand over there by her because she, she judging me. No, baby. I'm covering you. I don't care how holy you think you is. I still got on a slip. I'm standing up here with this light on me, this dress on me, this honey. There should still be some holiness in the church. I have my moments when I tell jokes. I am a jokester. For those that really, really, really know me, they'll tell you I'm a, I'm a joker to my heart. 
And I became a joker to my heart because I growed up hurting so bad. And laughing eased a lot of pain. So if it eased my pain, I'd rather make others laugh too to ease theirs. It ain't easy being yourself. It ain't easy being you. My question this morning is, two, what makes you unbreakable? What about you you afraid of? What about you that makes you afraid of you? The next question is, from this day forward, how are you going to keep your fire burning? We do it for a man. We'll dress up, smell good. When I get up in the morning, I haven't done it lately. I put my earrings on. I wash my face. I brush my teeth. I did that lately. I'm saying the makeup part. And I would even make my face up and smell good to go sit at my daddy's feet. Oh, that's strange. No, it's not. I do it for a man. Why you don't do it for Jesus? Why? Why would you allow yourself to make man become more than Jesus? I want all the fire starters to stand. I want you to look at your neighbor on your right and on your left and say, are you a fire starter? Or are you fire Marsha Bill? Because you can either start a fire or be the one the enemy will use to try to put one out. So you ask yourself, I am a fire starter, I am a fire Marsha Bill. I want to be both. And the reason why I want to be both, because I want his fire to continue to burn in me. And when I see a fire starting over here, I want to go and put it out. There's a way you can put out a fire without even approaching somebody or opening your mouth. You just do it. You just put the fire out. Go into prayer. Fast. Seek his face. Pray for her. Don't allow yourself to be so easily offended. Don't allow yourself. She ain't speak to me today, so that mean, uh, I don't know. She ain't look at me. JD ain't shake my hand at the door. I'm leaving the church. Brown didn't left, I'm gone. Oh, Lord, Brown going to go to church. I'm gone. That's not what it's about. You know how many people then left and I'm still here after 30 years? The founders is gone. And I'm still here. Because I got a promise from God. I didn't get a promise from man. I got a promise from God. I didn't get a promise from man. And I'm going to stand and I'm going to wait on the promise of God to be manifested and fulfilled. When you get up in the morning... And you look in the mirror, you know how we do. You know. Make sure going to church, got on my Sunday's best. But when you stand in the mirror and I say, God, who am I looking at? Do I like the person that I see? Do I really, really like this girl? Do I really, really know this girl, God? Do I know the girl who's been abandoned? Do I know the girl who never had a daddy but had daddies? Do I know this girl, God? Who is this girl? Who is this girl that stood outside a 
wooden house and let six of her family members die and they called her name. Who is this girl? Who is this woman? Why is she so easily disliked? Who is she? What makes her different, God? Why she keeps showing up Sunday after Sunday, God? Why do they keep using her? She ain't made for the women's God. Why? Because he didn't have to have a Zoom meeting with you about me. He didn't have to have a conference about me because he said he knew me before I was even in my mother's womb. I'm here to fulfill purpose. I'm not here to be liked. Father God, today in the name of Jesus, when we look in the mirror, God, let us see ourselves as the fire starters that you have birthed us to be. Killing the fire, God, that you put inside of us to carry out the assignment and the purpose, Lord God, that you have. Don't let us stand in the mirror just to put this one hanging lash on God. But let us stand in the mirror, Lord God, and look deep within ourselves. And say, God, is there anything in this body of mine, anything in this temple that's not of you, God? Take it out so when I see my reflection, Lord, I can see you. I don't want to look the same, God. And then you turn away from the mirror and deal with yourself. Because you can only stand there for so long. You can only stand in the mirror for so long and fix your hair and fix your lash. And what about the inside? I know it looked good out here, but what about the inside? So what? Because that teacher said you ain't going to be nothing. So what did the family member say you ain't going to be nothing? So what when the family member tried to rape you and take your virginity and, and do all these things and you had a little girl? And back then, family was so quick to put it up under the rug. But I'm that one in the family that exposed everything. Oh, she talked too much. Oh, no, it's not that I talked too much. Some stuff got to get dealt with. You have to walk in your authority, but be respectful. What do you do when you're the only one in your family? Say, I choose to serve God come hell or high water. What do you do as a little girl for so many years, 30 years, you went to the crack house to see your mama? She had to have two massive strokes to the brain for God to sit her down. Let's not live our lives, lady, going through till God has to sit you down to serve him. While he's giving you two legs and saying, you better serve him. You better lift your hands and praise him. Even before you get in this house, do it at your own house. Don't be one of those ones that wait till you're on your sick bed. I went and visited one of my family members about three weeks ago. And he said to me, he said, I'm not sick because I want to be sick. He said, I'm sick because I made myself sick. I said, well, how did you make yourself sick? He said, for 40 years, I walked around with anger and unforgiveness in my heart. He said, I did this to myself, laying on his sick bed. He said, I did this. He said, don't get to this point in life. Now you want God. Because see, now I can't be that person no more. I got to be what God said. But I, he said, it's too late. And guess what I said? It ain't too late. 